from the shimmer of light in the workshop he felt safe to the broken glass in the streets reflecting a fright desperation can set the stage for acts of villainy and heroes may need to confront that demons in more ways than one for a choice to be made you must overcome the binding and twining of souls of bond so strong it may just keep you Sorry, I, I guess I had my mic turned off just now. Let's try this again. Good morning, afternoon or evening. And uh, welcome to Arcadia Fallen. Where I think we were going into the woods, right? We were, weren't we? I think so. We needed to look for a flower. that. So, a blue cornflower. Gwyn mentioned that we should try our luck in the forest. Maybe we should just try and go together? Um... So, you wanna go with me into the forest? And you're sure we're only going because of the flowers? <laughs> what? Of course we're going for the flowers, why else would we? Okay, fine. You got me. You know how I told you Victoria found me in the wilted forest? Well, I don't remember how I got there at all. I have this feeling that there's something important I'm forgetting, but I just can't quite pin it down, you know? But I have this really strong pull towards the forest. I can't quite explain. I just thought, since we need to look for flowers anyway, then I might do a little digging myself, right? Of course. Okay. That's a good idea. Thank you! The forest surrounding Anemone Valley is lush and vibrant in early spring. The ground is covered in bright green foliage, and the anemone flowers, the area is named after, are just about ready to bloom. Elizabeth mentioned that this town holds a celebration when the flowers bloom out here. That sounds really lovely. Well, um... It is lovely. I love it. Everyone celebrates in the square with food and music. Then, when the sun goes down, People go out into the forest to look at the flowers. That seems odd. Looking at the flowers in the dark. That sounds a bit difficult. The flowers absorb some of the energy from the crystals in the mines below us. So when they bloom, they glow with magic energy. It's like stars, but on the ground. Really? That sounds so romantic. I would love to see that. Though, it's... It probably isn't that smart if the whole town is out celebrating. <laughs> Mime lets out a pouty sigh. I wonder... What about you? Will you go? Ooh, will you go with someone? 
Mime's words strike a chord within you. Is there someone in your life you'd like to bring to such a festival? Um, yeah. You find yourself smiling softly as the thought of that person enters your mind. <laughs> what? You're smiling. So there really is someone you like. Um... <laughs> maybe? Actually... I'm not telling though. Hmm... Really? Oh, but now I'm really curious. That's no fair. But fine. Your secret's safe with me. <gasps> oh! Mime rushes forward and crouches down near a tree where a blue flower is growing in the shadows. Look, here. Isn't that the one we're looking for? That's so lucky. You have to agree. This particular flower is incredibly rare, and the two of you have barely been searching for an hour. It almost seems too convenient. There's the rustle of leaves and you whip around, spotting shadowy antlers slowly moving away from the clearing. A deer? A shadow deer. Are you okay? Mime appears before you, arms full of flowers, but a slight concern in her eyes. You're looking a little pale all of a sudden. Something wrong? The deer is gone, and the unease in your stomach settles. You shake your head. I just thought I saw something. I'm not so sure about this. You think so? Something moved? I mean, <laughs> it's a forest, right? So there are probably animals here, yes, that's it. You probably just saw an animal. Nothing spooky at all. I didn't really find anything that could point me in the direction of my past. Honestly, this part of the forest doesn't trigger the same feeling of uh, longing the same way the dead forest does. I wonder why that is. Anyway, we should head back before Victoria gets suspicious. Let's take these to Elizabeth. The two of you return to the town with your bounty. That was nice. I must admit, I'm a bit envious of that invisibility spell you use, Mime. To disappear from sight even in bright daylight. Not even the night walkers can do that. It's not really that great since it only works on non-magi humans, but it beats having to hide away all day. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's okay. It was my own recklessness that landed me in this situation after all. Hopefully, once all of this is over, I'll have the chance to explore the world of daylight on my own. I hope so too. If you want to, I'll share all the interesting spots I found with you. <laughs> that sounds great, actually. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, That's nice. Let's go see Elizabeth. Um, I guess, I guess she said to do everything else before we make the potion, right? So, let's, um, let's go to the flower shop.
You search for a... Uh, your search for Anne takes you to Quinn's shop, and the florist gives you a friendly smile as you enter. Hey there, you two. Welcome back. Anne mentioned you would be dropping by. She's in the back, just be careful where you step in there, okay? Right. That sounds kinda ominous. Um, what happened? <gasps> Are you okay? Oh, nothing. I'm sure Anne's got it all under control. I tend to get a bit nervous around Tinker Magic, though. Too many sparks and moving parts. Anyway, you should go take a look for yourself. Let's go! Curiosity and dread settle in your stomach as you make it out to the back and enter what was a storeroom, now transformed into a makeshift workshop. Weird bits and pieces of tools and gadgets are scattered about everywhere, and a huge stack of books is towering ominously in the corner. In the middle of it all, scribbling away, sits Anne. Not looking up from her notes, even as you enter. Ah, you two. Glad you could make it. Um... Glad to see you've settled in. That's great. It feels very... you. <laughs> Thank you. I had to do some rearranging to fit in my workstation, but Quinn has been very helpful. I'm confident I can do my research unhindered but in this place, so now? She closes her notes with a snap and hops over to you, eyes glinting with anticipation. Let me have a look at that locket. Yeah, I'm looking forward to finding out more about it myself. Okay. I'm a genius. Thank you, and I'm confident this will be great. You hand the locket to Anne, who makes a muffled sound of excitement as she looks it over, forgetting all about you and mime as she rushes over to her desk. Anne brings out some different tools and begins poking and prodding away at the locket. She's so deeply focused, she doesn't seem to register you at all. Um... This looks like it might take a while. Should we sit down? You find an empty space somewhere on the floor and sit down to wait. Mime makes a game out of stacking books for a while, before she dozes off against the pile, leaving you to watch Anne in silence. Her face is scrunched up cutely in thought, and you notice she taps her foot lightly when she writes, but stops when she falls even deeper into thought. When she tinkers with the locket, her hands move swiftly and efficiently. It's almost uncanny just how precisely she moves. Maybe that's what Tinker Magic looks like. I'm a genius. After what must have been almost an hour of silence, the mage finally puts down her tools, stretching her arms above her head with a grin. Okay, I think I've got it. Huh? We got what, huh? Mime awakes with a start, blushing as she rubs the sleep from her eyes. What have you got? That's great. So... This is indeed a spirit locket, similar to the ones used in the past. No one uses them anymore since they run on the energy of spirits, which is taboo. Oh. 
Also, there kinda aren't a lot of us left. The demons you have collected aren't as much sealed away as they are simply absorbed into the locket's power source. This means every demon you collect has in fact added to the total power of the locket. Quite fascinating. As long as it keeps them sealed away, right? It is kind of sad to use them as fuel, but uh... So... That wasn't what I expected, but I suppose if they are kept sealed away from people, that's still the better solution. Oh. I mean, yeah, keeping them away from hurting people is important. It still feels a bit wrong though, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I agree. Using them as some sort of power source. Actually... As far as I can see, you haven't actually tapped into the locket's potential yet. You have been using a completely different power source. She looks to Mime, who blinks, pointing to herself. Huh? Oh yes, me. I suppose I have been the one helping you, since we've always felt that glowy connection when we seal one of those bad guys away. Fascinating. You've been using your magic to help Heli all this time, yet you do not feel yourself weakening? No way! I feel completely fine. Anne taps her chin with her pen before noting down a few more things in her notebook. So... Spirit alchemy is already a known school of the arcane, so I will not learn anything new poking my nose down that trail. The fact that you have to rely on another scarce power source that'll deplete over time isn't fixing anything, just creating a new dependency. No, the interesting aspect of this still remains you, Mime. Whoa! Me? Actually... My theory is that since you two are soulbound and not connected through the locket, the energy you channel from Mime isn't draining her. Of course, if you were to do something very challenging, I'm sure you both would be able to feel the strain, but you would recover, just like a mage recovers after having used their powers. This is amazing! In short, your connection has given Heli the same magical potential a mage possesses. So what? I'm like a mage now? <gasps> Does that mean that I can cast spells as well? Hmm? I suppose with the right training, you would be able to use magic much like mages do. Using the locket as a focus, of course, but that's just a theory. Yikes! We really have to find a way for us two to get unbound again. You do realize. Well, I wouldn't recommend that now, since we still need you two to be connected to seal away the demons we'll undoubtedly come across. Spirit magic, soul binding creating mages. These all scream taboo, but I must admit, finding a way to equip non-mages with magical potential would really change how we all think about magic. If magical items didn't need a power source, but people themselves could just power them on their own. Such a discovery, even if not put into practice, would be quite an achievement. Enough to grant me my title for sure. Yeah. Someone is totally going to abuse that though. <sighs> While in theory I could see this being a solution, 
There's no way someone isn't going to abuse this. I just provide the research that says it's possible. Yeah, but you do have to take some responsibility. What humanity decides to do with this knowledge is not my problem. Ah. Uh. I mean, you are right on one hand. But... <laughs> Also, you are responsible for what you create. You have to think about how it would potentially be used and how likely it would be that people would use it in immoral ways. You... You can't just dismiss your responsibility like that. Sounds to me like you're just making excuses because you don't want to admit anything bad might come out of this. Is your professor title worth that much to you? I can't believe this. You have no idea what that title means to me. You don't know me or what I've been through to get this far. If I don't claim this discovery, someone else will eventually, so I'm not going to hold myself back just because the rest of humanity is a bunch of morons. She hands you back your locket. That's all I wanted to research for today. Thank you for your cooperation. I will be calling upon you again when I need to learn more. <laughs> I think that's our cue to go. You and Mime leave. On your way out, you notice Anne returning to her little mountain of books, massaging her arms with a pained expression. A pained expression, huh? So maybe we did make her think. Well, um... I think I'm going to end this episode here, and in the next one, we'll go to the tavern and to the market, and then um, we'll go home and uh, see what happens. But for now, thank you so much for watching and spending a little of your time with me here today. It was lovely to have you. Please remember to be kind to yourself. Have a lovely rest of your day. And I will see you again next time.